Welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Welcome Lifestyle Solopreneurs. I am so excited today because we get to talk to Leah Fish, who is the principal of Joomer LLC. And I absolutely adore Leah. I've known her for I think five years now. And she's an entrepreneur who is extremely successful. I cannot wait for her to share some of her insights with you. She currently provides consulting and project management for industries which include finance, real estate, agriculture, media, and healthcare. She's worked with dozens of CEOs, entrepreneurs, and employees all over the US and internationally to help reduce anxiety and overwhelm and improve productivity. She specializes in women's leadership, as well as professionals with ADD and other anxiety disorders which interfere with their top performance. In addition, Leah has helped multiple clients create businesses and nonprofits, overseeing the creation of the business's model, putting contracts and regulations in place, and supporting the development of the hiring process. After doing professional organizing for nearly four years, she moved to London in 2005 and received an MSc in demography from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Upon her return to the US, she became certified in levels one and two of narrative therapy, a deconstructionist talk therapy at the Family Therapy Center in Evanston, Illinois. She incorporates some of these skills in helping her clients articulate their goals and better understand their difficulties in reaching those goals. She hosted The Foyer, the only call and talk radio show about organization in the nation on WOR Radio in New York City. She founded Joomer, her third business in 2012 and has been expanding the reach of clients and students through products such as Joomer's Reorganize Yourself Kit and Spotlight and programs such as CEO Rise, Productivity for Your Brain and The Game of Time. She has taught Joomer's methodology to the public in private venues such as WeWork and the National Opera Center, as well as in academia at John Jay College and Baruch College in New York City. She's a founding member of Green City Challenge, a nonprofit that promotes green living in urban areas, and served two years as president of her business networking chapter. Not to mention, she also speaks several languages. I've had the pleasure of hearing her speak in perfect Spanish. I'm also a fluent Spanish speaker. I am so amazed with her all the time. And she's just my favorite Manhattanite. She lives in Manhattan, New York. And one last thing that I want to add that's not in the official bio, but I found fascinating, is the name of her company, Joomer, Joomer, J-O-U-M-O-R, When we talked about the origin of the name, the first two letters are the J-O from joy, and the last U-M-O-R letters are the latter part of the word humor. So she has put together joy and humor, and she brings joy and humor to everything she does in life. Her uh, organizational skills are just amazing, and what I love about what you do, Leah, and we'll get into it in just a second, but I'm so happy to have you here because you don't just teach people how to organize and kind of a plain vanilla. I mean, you don't tell them, go to the container store and here's the boxes to buy and here's where you put your photos. You don't do that. You take it just so much bigger than that and you teach people to declutter their entire lives, their minds, their goals, their eating habits. I mean, it's just like a mass decluttering. So I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Flavia. I'm so delighted to be here talking to you. I've been excited ever since we kind of made this date, right, to have this interview. Uh, We met five years ago, and I can actually tell you exactly how we met. Do you remember, like, the exact way we met? You know, I was trying to remember, and I wasn't 
you know, I remember when and where we met, but I, I don't remember the exact details, no. I remember the exact details because it's one of those stories that proves that manifestation is real <laughs> and works. Oh my gosh, tell me. So I was headed to a multi-day conference and it was in another part of the state here in California. So, you know, I was going to do a big road trip, see some friends on the way. And then my mom, who you've met and is a very sassy, wonderful lady, my mom wanted to join my adventure. And she's like, hey, let's do the drive. I totally want to go with you. And I thought, this is great. Hopped in the car, drove up. By the time we got to our destination, which is where this conference was, I was I was feeling bad. I'm like, yeah, mom, you're going to go have fun and, you know, go explore and go shopping and do all these things while I'm in my business conference. But I wish you could go with me to the conference. Like, I, I really want you to go to the conference. I think you'd actually get a lot out of this and we've been having so much fun. I just don't want the adventure to end. But I didn't have a ticket for her. Um, I told her how much they were and she was like, nope, you're not allowed to buy me a ticket because you know, it was a very high-end conference. And, um, and I was like, well, are you sure? <laughs> it's a gift. I, don't, I want to. And she's like, nope, if you pay that much for a ticket for me, I'm, I'm going to get so mad I'm not even going to go. So I thought, all right, well, you know, I'm sure there's a way to get you a ticket to this event. I'm sure there's a way. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. And I just had this faith and confidence that it would all work out. And we checked into our hotel and I left the hotel to walk across the street to the conference center to go check in and register for the conference. And a hundred yards from the front door of our hotel room, <laughs> I saw you, yes, a perfect stranger, a very yeah. nice looking stranger who kind of smiled at me and I smiled at you. And I said, are you going to the conference? And you said, yes. And you were just very friendly. And I said, you know, I'm looking for a guest ticket for my mother. Would you happen to have a guest ticket? <laughs> and you looked at me like, well, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you remember? Yes, yes, yes. I remembered when you started. To, I was like, that's right. We saw each other right outside the hotel. Like we just walked right into each other pretty much. Yes. And it was like the most bizarre thing because that was very like sweet of you. You know, perfect stranger walks up and is like, can my mother be your guest for this event? <laughs> you're like, you're, th you're probably evaluating me like, okay, is she a crazy person? Like, I'm some, I don't know where I am in town. You know, I'm from Manhattan. Like, I'm, I'm a visitor. <laughs> is this where crazy people hang out? Um, but it worked out really well. And well, you know, people, I'm always sort of thrown off, uh, even though I've traveled the world and, and lots of the United States. <clears throat> But I am always thrown off by how friendly people in California are to me. The last time I was in California, I said, you know, I put it on Facebook to my friends, like everyone is smiling at me and nodding and saying hello, like it makes me feel like an awkward Manhattanite. <laughs> um, but, you know, people, I sort of am, am used to people being sort of, you know, strangely friendly uh, in California. So when you smiled wide and you also looked very friendly, I was like, oh, of course, you know. And then that you were going to the conference, you know, just we were, you know, that was it, of course. So, and I think we spent the entire time together at that conference and then the next one. Oh, totally. We had lunch. We hung out. I think we sat probably next to each other. Yeah. Um, and we just bonded and hit it off and, you know, supported each other's businesses. And it was a great learning environment. I just love conferences in general. The energy is so great. Totally. I always totally. encourage people to... You just have to. You just have to get in rooms with other people that have similar goals because that energy drives everybody forward. Totally. Which mm -hmm. is why I love that you teach workshops. And we'll get to that in a second because you help oh. build those communities. I do my best. So what? how would you describe what you do right now to earn an income? What's, what's your job? What's your career? So I teach uh, Joomer, which is a methodology that I've created from – you know, I could say my experience teaching professional, you know, being a professional organizer years ago. Um, but really, you know, for people who are entrepreneurs, we know better than that, that it's not just our professional experience, that really everything we do is folded into what we're doing right now. Um, and so, I, you know, for example, I was helping a client a couple of weeks ago um, sell her first package in consulting. And I said, okay, how many hours have you put into this? It was something for mothers and daughters. And she said, well, you know, right now I've put about three hours into it. And I said, okay, so three hours and 17 years. Uh, her daughter, 17. And mm -hmm. um, since she became a mother and she laughed and she said, oh, Leah, that's funny. I said, no, actually it's 
it's not funny. I mean, it sounds funny, but welcome to the world of entrepreneurship where everything you've done in this arena, you know, 17 slash, you know, 44, how old she is, um, you know, factors into what we do. So, Mm -hmm. um, so what I do right now um, in terms of earning an income is a combination of teaching classes and running online courses and working with people, um, one-on-one in consulting and project management projects. Um, And I would say, you know, my background in it is both from, you know, professional organizing, even, you know, what I learned in demography. I've written surveys for companies that I never planned. You know, I just did that because it interested me. I was interested in trends that I was seeing. Um, But then also things like I've been studying improv and, um, at the beginning of my in-person classes, we do um, little mini improv games before the class begins and during the break and at the end, you know, to get give people that connection, that energy, that total fun, um, and to get their minds warmed up. So um, it is, you know, technically I'm teaching organization productivity project management, but there's a lot more that goes into it, of course, um, than just those things sort of literally. And so do you teach online or in person or kind of a mix of both? Yeah, so I teach uh, the classes I offer, in-person classes in Manhattan uh, from time to time throughout the year. I also offer things that are totally online in, you know, an application um, where people can, you know, sort of see each other like a chat thing. Um, I offer things that I don't have video online courses. I like things to be live um, because, my, um, you know, my tagline for Joomer is clutter-free connection. Um, and there's seven levels to Joomer. Maybe we'll talk more about that. But um, what I really find is that, you know, having worked with hoarders in the past, um, I was on the show Hoarding Buried Alive, and I've saved multiple hoarders from actually eviction, which is, a, you know, something I'm very proud of. Um, and, and, and one of the sort of major risk factors that people experience um, is isolation, you know, from shame, from being alone, from their age, from whatever. And so um, I'm really interested in people um, connecting, you know, and connecting in a live way, not just online. So um, or not just watching a video that they may or may not watch and complete the course, maybe, maybe not. So my courses are live, um, even if they're accessible, you know, by video conferencing all over the world, they're still live courses. I love that. Yeah. And I usually ask solopreneurs, you know, what's your business journey? How did you get here? But with you, I'm going to change it up a little bit. All right. Change it up. What's your business journey from here? Like in the future, where do you see Joomer going? What are your goals for your company? It can be, you know, changing the method of delivery. It can be growing to larger attendees. Maybe you want to make it smaller and, you know, even make it more tight knit little groups. I don't know. Tell me where you're going with Joomer. Yeah, it's so interesting that you're asking me that right now, Flavia, because I am literally sort of in the middle of a, I don't want to say crisis, but sort of a crossroads. Um, Because my dream, I remember when I was in college and a friend of mine, um, you know, I was 19 and a friend of mine was asking, my roommate was asking all of her friends, um, what would you do if you had $10 million? Uh, Now, that was a while ago. So I feel like now it'd be like, you know, (laughs) inflation. (laughs) What would you do with $100 million? (laughs) Exactly. If you had $100 million, what would you do? I always say in, in some of my classes, I say, if you had $90 million, liquid. Uh, and I learned that because I've had, I work with a lot of people in finance and they're like, well, what do you mean? I mean, is it investment? I'm like, all right, liquid people, liquid. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, and, and, and what would I do if I had, let's say, you know, a hundred million dollars, I, I would found uh, a school not necessarily a university, but a school. And that's what I'm really trying to do, um, with the Jumer Institute. I would love to build something, you know, that's a combination of, you know, either, Um, online and in-person or online with satellite locations all over the world, like Landmark or something like that, Um, you know, and and that would include for for all the different facets of what I've worked with. That's really what I would love to do is build out the Joomer Institute. Um, You know, I want to add in teaching, you know, here and there I teach my clients, children about um, how to be really financially responsible, aware, and free. And I'm talking about, you know, nine and 10-year-olds, and, and that kind of thing, like teaching children financial literacy, 
um, but also teaching people uh, things like I'm going to have a course coming up called How to Move, Solve All Your Problems with Moving. Um, and, you know, all different things, including organization, productivity, time planning, all these different things. So I would love to, you know, be able to offer all of those things. And to do that, I'd love to train Joomer instructors, um, you know, who also teach these courses and have the Joomer. I'm working on something called the Product Wiki Hotline, uh, which will be a monthly a membership program where people can call in regularly and, you know, there's calls ongoing so that whatever organizing questions you have, whatever projects you're working on, you can get support through that. Um, I'm working on an online uh, course called Unhell Your Taxes, uh, which will be a year-long course to deal not only with taxes, I'm not an accountant or a tax attorney, um, but dealing with all the things around that, getting organized with, you know, simple things like logging into your you know, logging into your financial investments, like remembering the name of your counselor, you know, all these little things that sort of get lost in the shuffle that disconnect us from our own information. So I would love to build that out and have that be really, you know, growing and thriving and solid. Um, and at the same time, um, I'm really right now working a lot with, with women in leadership um, of all different arenas. You know, I'm working with, uh, I'm in a, part, in a community called Mama Gina School of Womanly Arts, uh, which is a women's sort of empowerment community, um, but with really incredible women. Um, it's really sort of, it's, it's called the Ple Pleasure Revolution. Um, so I've met a lot of women through that who have become my clients, including actually Mama Gina herself, Regina Thomasauer, um, and a lot of the leaders sort of in that community have become my my clients, um, and they're doing amazing, really revolutionary things in the world that I fully support. Um, and so it's sort of a you know sort of a, a crossroads for me to say, well, do I want to put my energy into reaching people who, you know, I feel strongly about supporting people who are in debt, children seniors, you know, where they have to move, where there may not be so much, um, they're not in the same kind of place, you know, emotionally, financially, with their reach um, as women leaders are. And these women leaders are doing a lot of wonderful things that I also want to support. So so I guess the answer to your question is, uh, where will Joomer be in five years? I don't know. That's my truth. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I see great things in Joomer's future, but it does sound like you have so many roads open to you and different paths you can take. And I know that, that for, a lot, for successful entrepreneurs, when you reach a certain level in your business, I think that becomes the, the real challenge. It's like, where oh. next? Where do I want to go next? What should I say no to? What should I say yes to? Totally, totally. And you know, and also articulating it along the way. And I think also be willing to, like I had um, my writing teacher, I guess there's a common expression, which I hate to, to even say out loud, but I'll just put it in quotes, you know, which is kill your babies or kill your darlings, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, these things that we nourished and we felt so strongly about and boom, like be willing to, to pull the plug um, on those things and, and, you know, shift gears, whether it's slowly or on a dime or whatever, um, and it's sometimes exactly that's the challenge is to know which things, you know, because as an entrepreneur, it's like we've birthed these things yeah, and it can be hard to let go of, of them, especially if we've been attached to the idea for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I've gotten to a new level of surrender with these things. And, you know, sometimes you see all the things that are coming toward you um, and, and they're feeling really good. And you say, you know what, I'm going to do this for a while. I'm going to continue with what I had in mind, uh, but I'm going to follow my sort of intuition and what I'm receiving and, and, and see what happens. I love what you just said, all of it. And it's so true. We get attached to things, don't we? I mean, not just ideas and projects and businesses, but people get attached to objects. I'm sure you've dealt with that with, you know, and hoarding and all physical objects. But so you're a busy girl because you've got all these different opportunities and clients and workshops and people that look up to you as a leader. And I'm sure there are a lot of demands on your time. Uh, given that the theme of this particular podcast is how to stay a lifestyle solopreneur and keep balance in your life and 
uh, not become a slave to your business, what do you do to stay balanced? And are you, do you feel balanced right now? Or do you also struggle with, with keeping that balance? <laughs> you know, I think I struggle with working enough to tell you the truth, Flavia. Um, I've gotten to, um, I've gotten so many things that I do sort of automatic and I'm very fast. Like I, people write, you know, I want to deal with it right away because as someone who, you know, I struggle with procrastination and have for much of my life. Um, when I'm working on a project for a client, um, you know, I want to get everything done as quickly as possible. So, you know, for example, um, I don't do this much, but occasionally for big scale projects, I, I will. I'm helping a client with two large uh, scale moves um, in the United States. And, um, you know, I have so many connections that I've worked so hard to develop over time that, you know, there's she's, you know, very stressed out. There's all these moving parts. And, you know, I don't want to brag exactly, but, you know, I'm proud to say that I, you know, can take all those moving parts, boom, 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 make the connections. What takes the longest amount of time in, in my work in these kind of project management things is simply follow up. It's not, you know, what, what I'm doing. So, um, you know, between projects like that and setting up my courses and, you know, delivering the courses or working with my clients, you know, I set it up around, honestly, around my pleasure. You know, I'm speaking to you right now uh, from a rented, amazing apartment in Cartagena, Colombia, South America, where there's, you know, a pool. Literally, uh, if I walk out the back door, there's a pool. And if I walk out the front door, there's another pool. Sounds like my kind of place. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. And, you know, I arrange my courses um, <clears throat> you know, so that the in-person ones match my schedule when I'm in Manhattan. I travel to other places and I arrange workshops. You know, if I'm going to visit a friend, we'll arrange and I'll teach a workshop while I'm there. Um, it's it's really done from a place of what would feel fun. Um, and when I'm working with, you know, things like a, a project, you know, we set out the timeline and I'll be very upfront with my clients and say, you know, I'm going to be away at this time so I can do it before and I can do it after. And they say, okay, great. Um, so I would say that balance is good. Um, I, I think uh, in my desire to add in more things, I need to be perhaps a little more strict with myself of doing things, you know, at a certain time, uh, perhaps. But honestly, you know, I write my newsletter when it works for me and I send it out and I work on things, you know, and, and you know, I like to offer that as well to all of the people who work with me that, you know, I want it to be a pleasure to work with me as well. Um, and the people that I work with, you know, they do it on their own time when works for them. And, you know, I think I, I firmly believe in freedom and uh, I want it for myself and I want to provide that for, you know, for my clients, for for the people that are working with me. And so that's really a, a strong theme, I would say, of my work ethic. That's fantastic. And it sounds like you really have achieved a life where you have the flexibility and freedom to do things like travel to Colombia and stay at a beautiful resort or, you know, make your career sort of fit around the things you want to do. And I think of you as an extremely fun person. And I'll tell you why. Oh, thank you. Because we're at this business conference. And, you know, at the end of the day at a big, you know, the big business conferences, like 600 yeah, plus people, they people said. are tired. Yeah. I mean, they go and do their networking dinner and then they're like, I'm beat. I've been talking all day. I just want to, you know, go hang out in my hotel room and like, watch TV and go to bed. <laughs> Miss Leia Fish looked at me and it's like, let's go salsa dancing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I said? Because I like to say this word a lot when things, even if I, part of me was kind of tired, I was like, yes. Yes. Let's go salsa dancing. And we found a place and we went salsa dancing and it was a fantastic fun night so, so thank fun. you for your fun because you are a fun person and you do bring joy and humor to what you do i also want to put in a quick plug for that newsletter you mentioned that you write huh. that you send out to your mailing list because man that it's really you in those emails oh, i mean you. some people write emails and it's like they're they have an agenda or they're trying, you know, trying to be someone else or they're trying to sound a certain way or whatever. And it's not really them, but I know you. And then when I read your newsletter, I'm like, that is you. And they're oh. so instructional. Like there's, there's a lot in each one that benefits the reader. So 
Thank you. You know, I, I listeners, if you are looking for some inbox inspiration, I really do recommend that you go to Leia Fish's website, sign up for the Joomer newsletter. If you do nothing else after this episode of the podcast, you should definitely do that and check check her emails out. I just think your voice is so authentic and great. Thank you. Yeah, and it's just Joomer, J-O-U-M-O-R.com. And then there's a right there, it says join the newsletter. And you just put in your first name and your email and there you go. You're all set. Yeah. And uh, one last question for you, because in a recent email, you mentioned something about Russian dolls. Yeah, the Matrushka. Yeah. The Matrushka. Tell me just a little bit about the Matrushka, because I was intrigued. So the Matrushka, um, the Matrushka, the task is a Jumer. So Jumer is a collection of principles um, that I've sort of codified over the years of things that I've seen work, you know, over and over and over doing this for, you know, at this point, 14 years. Um, and so Matrushka, the task is the idea that uh, whatever task you have to do, there'll be things, you know, that sit, we all have this on our to-do list or as, as many of my clients have said, no, I don't want to put it on the list because I know I'm not going to do it and I don't want to look at it. Right. Um, you know, there's these things that are just so hard to do. We just don't do them. And why? And what I've found is that when we break tasks down uh, to the smallest part, um, you know, there's a lot of productivity, you know, literature out there more and more in the last few years that's just breaking down to the smallest part. Uh, but what I have in the Matrushka the task is in a Matrushka doll, those are those Russian nested dolls. Um, you know, it's a smaller one and a smaller one and a smaller one. And usually on the very, very inside, the tiniest doll on the inside is a little baby. And so, you know, I love metaphors. Um, and so, you know, what's the idea of, of finding the baby? You know, in, in Matryoshka, the task, we find and nourish the baby. So how do we do that? We break the task down to the smallest possible part. And usually at the very inside, the so-called baby of the task is a way, one of two things or both. It's a way either that we haven't stood up for ourselves in a situation, and so that kind of experience is blocking us um, subconsciously or consciously, or it could be something as simple as getting information that we don't currently have. Like, for example, we haven't booked our ticket. You know, we just have, you know, book ticket to California, but at the very inside of that task, we have to talk to, I'm making this up, you know, um, we had an argument with our friend. We were going to go on the trip together and we have to sort of deal with that argument because now we don't know if he or she is going to join us on the trip. But it's like, oh, I just keep not booking that ticket. The mm -hmm. flight's are getting more expensive. It's stressing me out. But really mm -hmm. on the inside, I have to take an action. Or there was a conference that I needed to put in my calendar and I can't find the email and I need to get that information to put, you know, but mm -hmm. it's these things on the very inside and that when we look for those and we just address it, you know, as neutrally as possible, um, suddenly, you know, we're all the way to the outside, boom, and we finish the task. I am so glad I asked you about the Russian dolls because I love what you just described. I mean, that is so true. Um, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. Maybe you do. I don't remember if we've ever talked about it, but I'm a lawyer now. I'm, you know, and I... I'm an author, I do different things, I'm an entrepreneur. But at Thank one you. point in my life, I was a wedding planner, which at the time was really a lifestyle solopreneur endeavor because wedding planners, if you do it right, have a really good flexible schedule, except that you give up your weekends for the summer. So that's like mm -hmm. the only downside, but otherwise it's usually on your own time. And um, a, it was a great time, I did it for five years. and. Let me tell you, being any kind of a planner for an event, an event planner, a wedding planner, any of that, a corporate event, you really have to learn to be good at that. So I can take a big goal and deconstruct it into all of the small things that go into it. I even had checklists of my checklists and you know, I had a packing list. So I wasn't stressed out, headed out to a wedding because I knew that I packed everything I needed to pack because mm -hmm. I had broken it down to all the little tasks that you know, lead up to the big event. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also something, of course, like anything else that, you know, I'm sure, I mean, I've always thought of you as 
a naturally organized person and maybe that's accurate or, or not. I don't know. But you also get, you know, it's a muscle. Like you get in the habit of, um, you know, when someone says, oh, we're going to do this, I'm immediately thinking, how long is it going to take? What kind of constraints are, you know, could possibly occur? You know, the, you know, you just, it becomes much more automatic, like any, any kind of muscle that you flex. So yeah, I'm sure five years in, you, you were definitely an expert uh, by the time you moved on to other things. Yeah. And it's a, like you said, it's a learned skill which I think some people really beat themselves up because they feel like totally. they're just not good at being organized. Like, oh, I'm just, I'm late to everything. I'm a scatterbrain. I, you know, I can't keep a to-do list because I keep losing my to-do list. Like, and that's not, doesn't feel very organized, <laughs> but totally. it's a learning skill. It totally, that's so true. And that's actually something I say all the time. You know, I, I can tell you, I, I'm going to write a, a newsletter about this, a, a blog, um, because people say all the time, you know, they'll admit to me how ashamed they are to, to be working with me, which I think is one reason why word of mouth is a little different in, in my business. It can be challenging because people don't many times want to admit, you know, that they needed help in this arena. But, you know, as I say to them, I say, you know, in school we learn, you know, we learn addition, we learn geography, we learn how to read a map, how to write a letter. We even learn things like algebra, which we're not using, but when did you ever learn project management or organization? When did you ever learn the best way to store, um, you know, things in a small space that was never taught? We didn't learn how to pack our bags in school. And so people say, oh, it's terrible. I always bring too much. Well, that's something that's never taught. It's just expected that we would know it. And the truth is, People are good at different things and some people know how to do it and others don't, but it's perfectly valid to not understand something or be gifted at something that you've never learned. And you have, I think, picked the right time to do, you know, to teach what you know and to do what you do because I think organization has become more of a topic that people talk about. HGTV, you know, has all the shows about decluttering and hoarding and um, there's a focus on it. Marie Kondo, who you mentioned a little earlier, she wrote a book, um, uh, the title's super long, I'm trying to remember, it's like the tidying up, the magical something of tidying up, right? Yeah. And, and I hope you write your book because you know what? I will enjoy and I think get more out of your book. There's an author and a teacher for everybody, but I like your your methodology and how you approach clutter. I also really like that you come from a place like you mentioned. I mean, it was a very vulnerable thing to say that you've struggled with this stuff. So you've really like picked it up and worked with it and examined it from a personal level. Totally. And to me, that's so valuable. I liked Marie's book. I've read it. Actually, I have mm -hmm. it somewhere. And um, actually on my Kindle. So it didn't add any clutter because <laughs> it's electronic. <laughs> but her book for me was an 80-20. 20% of it I really, really liked and was able to apply. And, you know, 80% of it for me, I was like, I'm I'm not going to talk to my socks and like um, not fold. I like my socks in the little balls, you know, where you, yeah. you roll it up and then you, you put the end over and it's a little ball, like a tennis ball. I love yeah, yeah. that. Like to me, that is awesome. That's how I like my socks. And she said the socks don't like it. They get tired of being stretched out like that. And, um, and a few other things that she taught where I'm like, okay, this is the 80% of the book that I don't, you know, it yeah. was just an interesting read, but I'm you not going to apply tires it. out socks is um, using them. So I feel so proud every time I recycle. I'm really into, uh, as you know, you know, green and, and reuse and recycling. And um, I love using things. You know, the best way to um, to declutter is to use what you have and use it until it's not usable anymore. Um, and so forget putting box, uh, uh, socks in a ball that, you know, okay, they might get tired, but what really tires socks out is when you use them and then they wear out, you know, and to me, that's beautiful. Um, you've given them a full life and, you know, now they're moving on to the other side to be recycled into something else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. And, and I will say, you know, not to, not to bash Marie Kondo, I fully believe, you know, whatever works, for you, that's the point. One of the Jumer principles is whatever works. Um, and sometimes it's hard for us to admit the things that actually work for us. But I will say um, uh, that a lot of my clients sort of admitted to me that they they're like, Leigh, I tried to do the book so that I could, you know, do it on my own. And 
And a lot of them came out feeling worse than they felt before because they, they, they couldn't, it didn't help them to make decisions. It didn't help them to understand themselves better. Um, they tried to do things. They slipped back into their old, you know, I, they, you know, but those are the clients I specialize in. I'm sure, you know, for many people, she's helped many, many people and that's great. Um, but for me, it's, um, if you're, if you're interested in better understanding yourself, um, that that's perhaps not the best option for you. Well, everything you teach is so useful on many levels, not just to declutter your physical space, but also to sort of organize your mind, your life, your goals. Um, you know, it's a great experience for people to go to your live workshops because then they get to do it in a community with other people in the room. Um, unfortunately, we don't all live in Manhattan. <laughs> we don't. True. I know you teach other places on occasion, but primarily in your home city of Manhattan. And from time to time, you do hold these live workshops. So again, earlier I said, hey, everyone, jump on her newsletter because it is her authentic voice. You'll learn a lot. And that's great. But taking that one step further, if, if people want to really learn these principles and work with you directly in a group setting, then where would they go to learn about when your next live workshop might be? Yeah, thank you so much. So, so there's two things. One is on my website, Joomer, J-O-U-M-O-R dot com. You can look at where it says Institute. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, I'm hoping to build that out over the next few years. Um, and that will have all the information. And, you know, Flavia, I'm going to put a special code for all your listeners, um, just the code Flavia, all lowercase. And what we'll do is that there will always be a discount, whether the course is $49 or, you know, Fifty-five hundred dollars. Uh, there'll always be a, a discount for Flavia listeners, um, so they can go. Ahead. Yeah, of and course. you're also uh, challenging my listeners because now they have to know how to spell my first name right off the top of their head because it's not an easy name, right? So F like flower, L A V as in Victor, I A Flavia. And wow. thank you yeah. for being generous and offering a discount to listeners. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and all so all lowercase, and um, I'll make sure that we always do that for any course, you know, now and to forevermore. Um, and then the other thing is, um, I'm very very proud. Actually, I don't think I even told you this, Flavia, but we are uh, hopefully in the next few weeks going into beta testing for the Joomer app, um, which is. Uh, as an illustrator that I just uh, started working with initially said, she said, what, what's the difference between this and any, uh, you know, checklist or productivity app? You know, what's different about this? And I said, what's different about this app is that it cares um, that um, and you'll that. learn, you'll learn and it cares. So uh, it'll teach you, you know, th there's a daily principle for you to sort of noodle on as you go throughout your day a Joomer principle, as well as, you know, it'll follow up with you and, and care about things. And down the road, we plan to have the app. Uh, you know, my, my vision for the app is I don't need a billion dollars like WhatsApp, but I'd love to have the kind of success of really connecting people, um, you know, th throughout, you know, the United States or the world um, who have the kind of mentality of wanting to look deeper into themselves to improve their productivity and and be gentle with themselves uh, in so doing. So the Joomer app should be coming out, um, you know, it's uh, 2016. Uh, we're only halfway through, not even. So it should be coming out, you know, really available for purchase later this year. How exciting. I'm so excited for you. I think that sounds like a great project. I wish you the best on that for sure. I uh, can't excited. wait to get updated when that's available and out and I will help you promote it because I think people need that in their lives. You know, it's thank you. It's yeah. hard. Modern life is hard and you need hacks. I mean, you need ways to keep balanced and centered and to know what's important and to stay mindful and thoughtful and I think everything that modern life at least here in the United States is centered around works against that. So we I like it's like you take vitamins because our food doesn't have enough vitamins. Well, right. We need these kinds of apps and courses and connection and group work and so that we can, it's like an antidote to 
browser blackout and over scheduling and <laughs> everything yeah. else we face, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely ironic. We you know, there's all these communities for connection and we now have the highest rates of, you know, depression and anxiety uh that we've ever had and in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Uh so it's sort of ironic, you know, and, and the number one thing that is sort of proven um to help mental disorders is community, right? So it's mm -hmm. really an ironic time uh, that we live in on in, in in many different ways. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the good work that you do to battle that epidemic <laughs> of disconnect <laughs> by bringing people together with Joomer and your speaking and teaching and everything that you do uh, to bring those communities together and to nurture them and to help all of us. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to chat with a friend in just a fun way in front of all these, uh, in front of all your listeners. What a fun, what a fun way to spend an hour. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave a review on iTunes, I promise I will read every single review. If you know someone who makes a full-time living from part-time work, and maybe this is you, please visit lifestylesolopreneur.com to nominate a guest or to nominate yourself. Because remember this, money doesn't buy happiness, but money in the hands of a happy person, there is no greater tool. Today's episode was brought to you by the Get Shift Done program. It's a lifestyle changing online class to help you define your business and lifestyle ambitions and to set goals in a way you've never experienced before. This class will 10x your daily productivity with methods that will blow your mind. And if you use a coupon code podcast, the class tuition is 99% off. Visit GetShiftDone.com to enroll today.